1007, hour number two of the Bruce and Dan Show. I'm Jake Hartford. And I'm John Kiss. Joining us right now is the next congressman from the uh, se- 2nd District of Illinois, uh, Sam Adam Jr. Good morning, Sam. Uh, good. good morning, but that's certainly not true, at least at this point. You like the ring of it, though, don't you? Uh, well, of course. It would be an honor to, do, to, to, to be considered for such a position. Of course. I, I'm, I'm literally flattered by it. And uh, you would be definitely the most entertaining candidate. <laughs> I don't see how, how anyone could out-debate you if there was a debate. I, I, the truth of the matter is, John, and, and I mean this wholeheartedly, it would come down to what issues affect the second district most. I'm very familiar with the second district, and it would come down to that. I, 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 as far as style and, and all that, people would have to come in and, and, and make their own determinations about that. I, if I were to run, which I have not uh, said I will, and I certainly haven't made a decision not to, um, I can just tell you I, I, it would be something that I would be proud to do and debate seriously uh, things that affect those people in the second district because they really need some help, John. Well, given, given the fact that you've said you, you're not a candidate yet, you're just thinking about it, but what are the issues as you see them in the district? Well, first and foremost, I've gone through that district quite a bit. You know, I grew up uh, in Kankakee. I had my father and I had a summer place down there. I spent all my summers down in Kankakee. Uh, and the, the issues from the drought during the summer and getting some uh, federal funds down there to help out those farmers, help out those migrant workers, help out uh, from the gladiola fields that are down there that I worked in when I was 14 uh, to the corn, uh, helping those farmers out is something that we're going to have to bring home from Washington. Here in Chicago, we're going to have to get jobs. One of the issues that's going to come up is gambling. Should the south side uh, suburban areas have a casino? Uh, and it's going to be, there's going to be racial politics played in that because people have been saying for a long time that the white areas of Chicago and the, and the suburbs of Chicago are getting casinos, which do bring in a tremendous amount of money. Why shouldn't a predominantly African-American suburb have a casino in it? And, and it, we can debate all day long whether or not uh, cas- uh, casinos are good or bad. But if you're going to have them, shouldn't the south side, shouldn't that second district have that kind of an income maker come in? So that, those are two top issues that I think are going to come up because they involve jobs, they involve money from Washington, and they involve making sure the people in the community have a fair shot at, 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 at having economic stability in their area. One of the uh, interesting things to me that's going on is this whole racial politics business in the second congressional. Um, there are people saying the seat has to remain uh, in African American hands. Uh, Debbie Halverson is the only so far announced white candidate, and the argument is too many uh, African Americans will split up the vote. Is that? Reminiscent to you of the old Gus Savage kind of <laughs> rhetoric? Yeah, so, so, well, uh, certainly, of course. Now, if I run, and, and I mean this wholeheartedly, I want to be the most transparent and the honest truth teller. That's all I want to be. Of course, there's going to be issues of race played in this particular race. There's no question about it. And, and to say otherwise, we're just not being practical. Uh, whether or not uh, uh, how many African Americans run, whether it splits the race, is not really what concerns me. What I am concerned about is making sure that we get somebody in that seat that's willing to do things and acknowledge the black community, the African American community, and the help that it needs. So now, is it racist? Was, is it racist to say that the seat has to remain in African American hands? In my opinion, uh, uh, no. It's not what I would call a racist. I think it's a practical statement for people uh, who have an idea that if I'm going to vote for somebody, I want them to look like me and think like me. So that means that black people, because of the virtue of their skin color, think differently than white people, Sam? Is that what you're telling me? No, I'm not telling you that it's based on the skin color. I'm based on uh, culture. It's certainly based on, in a lot of areas, on uh, the, the circumstances in which you find yourself. Now, look, John. If you find yourself growing up in an area and like-minded people and people who look like you uh, come up with certain ideas and things that affect them in a certain way, you're going to have like-minded ideas. Now, to say that that's simply based on skin color is not true in and of itself. But to say that people think that it does very well may. Now, I can't pretend to play these uh, rhetoric games, these semantic games. You're a lawyer. But, but not, not if I'm running for the second district, while I may be a lawyer. My uh, loyalty would be to the people of that second district. Green, brown, red, purple, Hispanic, black, white. It makes no difference. What I want to do is make sure that when I'm done with that seat, if I were to run for it, that that's the best seat in Illinois. 
That would be my job. Now, that means we have to acknowledge that Hispanics are in that community, and we have to do what we can to help Hispanics. We have to make sure that the white suburbs are getting everything they possibly can, not because they're white, but because they're in my district. We have to make sure that black people uh, have everything they can to get uh, better educated, to make sure that they have jobs, not because they're black, but because they're in my district. These are games that the media wants to play. I'm not playing those games. I want to do what's right for everybody in there if I were to run. I would love to see you debate Danny Davis. I know it's two different districts, but you are such a quick talker, and he is such a slow talker. It, it would be fun to watch. <laughs> uh, he, he would probably out-debate me every day of the week because he's a very intelligent and slow uh, uh, politician who knows the issues very well. Yeah, but with you, the, the people get more bang for their buck because you can get more ideas out and <laughs> get a lot more done. <laughs> well, I, rather, I, I just think, that uh, the ideas that I have uh, are certainly fresh and new. That we've got to stop playing games because we're in serious trouble. You know, we're facing a financial cliff that's coming up here in the next few weeks. We really need serious people for a serious issue. We don't need to be playing politic games. We don't need to be playing race games. We need people to sit down and say, listen, we have a practical problem here that needs practical solutions. And if we're going to do this, we're in this boat together. Are you going to sit down with Madigan? Are you going to sit down with Madigan and Joe Berrios? Would I do it? Yes. Certainly. Have but you John, done Have you I, done it yet? Have you reached no, out I, to I, The truth of the matter is I start Commissioner Beaver's right. trial Monday. That's really the only thing I have been focusing on. I have to do the best job I can for a client who has hired me, who believes in me, who is having me step up in his name. That's the only thing I've been focusing on. Yeah, well, uh, tell me about that. For I know we got, only got a second, but that is oh. going to be a big deal. How's Bill? You know, the last time I talked to him, he said that the feds wanted him to wire up on Johnny Daly, and he wouldn't do it and got indicted. Is that <laughs> well, basically the argument you're going to put in, in front of the jury? Well, certainly the argument we're putting in front of the jury is what the government says is simply not true, that this man uh, has did not failed to pay his taxes. In fact, he's overpaid his taxes. Uh, and we'll be able to show that. Now, this is not going to be kind of like Blagojevich where it's going to be Sparks and, 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 and Showtime and all. This is a tax case. Uh, but I think, and we feel very confident here, that we're going to be able to show that Commissioner Beavers not only paid the taxes that he was supposed to, he overpaid them. Sam, I appreciate it, as always. I uh, appreciate you guys coming. And, Jake, I, I never got a chance to thank you for, for the... Uh, whoa, 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 whoa. Thank you for, for the good words. <laughs> You're welcome yes, for the sir. good words, Sam. Appreciate it. Yes, sir. Bye-bye. <laughs> Sam Adam Jr. <laughs> yeah. You can imagine him debating the others. He'd have to put ten pebbles in his mouth to make he's it got a lot of, He's got a lot He's got a lot of good ideas. I've done shows with him. He's, he's a he's very, best. very smart guy, and he thinks outside the box, and maybe that's what we need in Washington right now. Somebody thinks outside the box. It's a Democratic box. 10-15, time for... Our traffic, which is for everybody right here, traffic on the fives. 1016, John Cass and Jake Hartford are back here. You just heard Sam Adam. Interesting thing was talk about the casino uh, in the south uh, side or south suburbs. Uh, right. And and casting it as sort of uh, uh, African-Americans should have their casino, too, as if they can't go to the other ones. But it's not, whenever I hear that, that tells me... Somebody wants to be on the favored list of investors. Uh, somebody wants an in on that deal. And these are power brokers who usually get it. It's not Jake Hartford, John Cass, or people in the listening audience. Yeah, but I would think there's there's suburbs down there that could really use some jobs. I mean, that was that's what Jesse Jr. was always talking about. Right. You know, jobs, jobs, jobs. And, you know, that that's a real poor area. Yeah, and who's going to go to the casino? If you have that casino... Then where are you going to go? The one downtown or the one out there? If you live out there, nearby, you can put them right off one of the expressways. Yeah, you got fifty seven out that way. You've got uh, ninety four. You got a lot of, lot of you know, places. I understand they need jobs, but I, I'm against opposed casinos because when government runs casinos, it's about government betting on the people to lose. That's what it is. Well, that's, that's the, we got the lotto coming up tomorrow night. That's yeah, although I bought a ticket. Well, see, there you I'm go. Such a sucker. Well, four hundred twenty-five million dollars, and gee, if if it's one winner, and you know it's not going to be, it'll be three, four winners. You have to split. But if it's one, 
after you take the the lump sum and then after the taxes you're down to 198 million dollars with that if i win that i'll buy you a co-host and then i'll go on <laughs> i'll go to costa rica and go fishing but that's what that's how they sell the tickets they sell the dream yeah that's it for now, a couple what, bucks it's what worth would I, it. what would i do if i won the money oh, dear, yeah. yeah but you know what there have been a lot of people that have won the money has not been good for them i saw did you see that documentary that came out about all the Terrible things that happen to people. It's like, I don't want to win. Well, there was a guy in Philadelphia, in Pennsylvania, that his wife tried to get him killed a couple times. His relatives took the money, and it was just, it just he, he went to court to give the money back. Yeah. He had to get permission from the court to give the money back, because otherwise he was afraid he was going to be dead. Uh, Mike, who's a city worker, good morning, Mike. Uh, good morning. I can't believe the great misdirection that's being played on the Chicago press. Everybody is worried about Congressman Jackson's seat when the big political story is after-school matters and the TIF funds. The TIF funds are just the tip of the iceberg. A lot of city contractors, people that wanted zoning changes and liquor licenses, had to donate to after-school matters. And I was told by someone that works there, there's only 10 people on the payroll, but every payday there'd be 50 or 60 paychecks printed up. That was... The mayor's favorite charity used as a slush fund for ghost payrollers. You're maybe. talking about the past mayor, not the current mayor. Correct? The past mayor, yes. You're not talking the about father. You're talking about Mayor Shortshanks, as we call him. Short Shortshanks, yeah. Yeah. The guy that says everything is silly, silly, silly. But how many city hall big shots had mistresses or girlfriends on that ghost payroll? Well, do not mention any names by. <laughs> well, he just publicly. Ki- he just kind of. Trashed the the charity by saying mistresses and girlfriends. I don't even, yeah, I don't even know anything about that, but it would be interesting to see who got paid. I just called the inspector general's office, and they said they can't do anything about it because they're a private company. I says, but they get free premium city uh, rent at the cultural center right on Michigan Avenue. They says, well, we have no control over them. All right, thank you, Mike. I says, evict them. Don't they have to file with the state if they're a charity? A, I was fi- sure. a 501c3 yeah, I'm files, sure all that. I'm sure all that would be there without right. whoever get, was getting paychecks names, and all that stuff. Though. Yeah, well, if they have to. Names, too? Yeah, they always do, sure. Yeah. I remember when, when, when Sandy hit, I was looking at the Red Cross to see where their money goes. and there was, Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah the, the boss all, was making yeah. a million dollars a year, right? Yeah, something right. like that. Yeah, it was. they list everybody, all the expenses. Right. They have to. So, I mean, I don't know. I, I, didn't do the, I didn't do an investigative report in that, so I can't, uh, can't tell you what or isn't in there we will get to more calls but first it's 10 21 time for whatever we do when you want chicago's classic hits turn to 94 7 wls for traffic and weather info tune into 890 a.m wls for traffic and weather first on the fives when you need it most 1026 john cast jake hartford uh Apparently, State Representative Monique Davis was listening to the show, and I think she heard something uh, either you said or Sam said. Good morning, Representative Davis. Good morning. I've been listening to your show all morning. Um, I'm here in Springfield. I need to go in a meeting. But um, I had to call in because a large portion of the 2nd Congressional District includes um, the 27th District. You know, the Roseland section, there's a large section, the Washington Heights. And I think the person who is chosen, they should have a history of serving the public. They shouldn't have a history of being in office, but a history of having served the public. So that means you're with Donnie Trotter, or who? Who are you supporting? Uh, neither. No one at this point. What about, um, we're hearing a lot about men. Right, men being running. What about uh, Toy Hutchinson? Let me repeat my statement. The people who are supported and the people who, who want that seat should have a history of having served the public. If you've been in office, you should have a record that proves you are in this business to serve the public, not as a stepping stone for something different or better. Well, State Senator Hut, uh, Hutchinson is a... Uh... State Senator, she's been in office. What do you think of her? Well, I, I, she's a... Well, ...say that any of them are not okay. But I will say 
that their history as elected officials should certainly be looked at and observed. I didn't hear now, your first think, part. I think when I asked you specifically a, about Toy Hutchinson, what did you say? I didn't. Hear your that. phone dropped out. Your phone dropped out. I said she's a fine person. I know Tory. I know. I know all of them. Absolutely all of them. But I also know some of the history of some. Read that your history should prove that you are interested. Your voice, her phone's dropping out. Sorry. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. All right, all right, you, I mean, you just said you know the history of some of them. Uh, whose history would, would disqualify them, do you think? Um, <clears throat> well, if they choose to run, their history will certainly be told. If they choose to run, their history will definitely be told. Let me, let me say, as an elected official, they just want a job. Who, who, you know, your phone keeps cutting out, and, right all the good, the good and all the good stuff's being cut out, Representative. <laughs> don't move your head. Just who stand who still. Don't, who don't you want to see of the names you've heard? I'm not going to say it right now. I won't tell you. I will not say that right now. But you I will ch- not. But I will say this. Those who are jumping out there saying they're going to run, your history be told. That's all I'll say. You're threatening to drop a dime on them by calling John Cass at the Tribune uh, if they <laughs> run, right? Is well, that what I'm you're saying? saying to them that you are not going to fool the public. You cannot do it. This position is too important. You know, you cannot go to Washington and just be a social butterfly or a person who's enjoying the ladies or someone who's really not interested in doing the hard work. It sounds and, like sounds like Monique Davis might want to run. Um, you know what? I don't think you want me to run. No, you don't want Monique. <laughs> hey, we, we have to let you go. One, one last question. Uh, the uh, the income tax increase, which was temporary, is that going to come up in the, the the session now? If so, would you vote for it to be permanent? I don't think it, I really think it's going to come up for it to be permanent. I would do that. I, I'm sorry. What what you would do? What, what's going to happen? Oh, I would vote. Yes, I would. To make it permanent. Um, I'm sorry. Hello. Yes, you'd vote. You'd vote oh, to make man. it permanent. Yes. Yeah. All right. All right. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you, Thanks. Representative. Bye bye. All right. Phones, huh? Between all the here good and Springfield. stuff dropped out. All the good what? stuff. That's juicy the, stuff. That's the Madigan sensor. <laughs> it's Mike Madigan breathing on her neck. Ten thirty. No, he doesn't do that. Ten thirty. Uh, time for news, weather, traffic with Dave Stewart right here on eighty nine W L S. Have a story we need to know about? Call the 89 WLS News Tip Hotline at 312-236-0507. At 1037, I want to remind you to sign up for the Townstone Financial WLS text line and receive breaking news from 89 WLS. Text BREAKING to 68683. Standard text messaging rates apply. For details, click on the mobile tab at WSAM.com. Uh, we've been talking here since 9 o'clock, John, and I've been dominating the conversation, and it's all the stuff I've wanted to talk about. John, what do you want to talk about? Isn't that usually the case, though, Jake? I sit here and say, "Uh uh-huh, yeah, 89 WLS, Jake and John. And I feel bad about it. You're you're the driver. You're the dad of this show. Well, but you know what? I've realized... I'm just the kid in the back. I've realized the errors of my way. I I, I stepped out of the studio for a couple minutes, and somebody came up to me and says... Why don't you let John talk? They said, yeah, is John there today? Yeah. And I said, yeah. And they said, well, gee, we don't hear him. What, what's on John's mind? So you know what? What's what's what? on your mind this morning, John? What What is bothering you in your world? You know what? I, my world is pretty smooth, man. I have... Uh, well, that's not going to fill the rest of the half hour well, I, here. It's not with, about with a, controversy, with an attitude man. Like that. My, I, everything's working out at home. I got a great job. I love hanging with you in the morning. And the guys behind the glass. Except Couldn't tell it by doing, the look on your face right now. Except when they're doing the <laughs> toilet uh, references, toilet plunger or whatever. I thought I thought uh, Sam Adams was pretty interesting. Sam Adam, the whole business of uh, playing racial politics and then saying he's not playing racial politics. I like that. That's kind of delicious. Um, what did you think of that? That whole. He's a very smart play. guy, right? He's a very smart guy. So do do and I and I don't know if if if. Congress really needs somebody that's too smart. What? But Monique Davis comes on. As soon as he gets off the phone, State Rep. Monique Davis comes on and says, if anybody runs who doesn't have public service, I'm going to drop a dime on him. Who is she talking about? Corey Brooks? 
I don't know. It sounded like what, did Sam prompt her call? There's all sorts of uh, soap opera aspects of that. I don't know. It'll be fun. When I get done here, I'm going to write a column about it for tomorrow. Wow. And it's great because, uh, you know, you get quotes from the WLS uh, production staff. They send it to us, and we type it up. Let's go to the phones. Maddie in Orland Park. Hey, Maddie. Good morning. Uh, I just had a couple thoughts about uh, with Sam and Monique. Yeah, what did you Sam, think? I mean, usually I agree with, with Sam on what he says, but it seems that certain groups are allowed to be, quote-unquote, ethnic, but other groups are racist for having the same viewpoints. Um, but with Monique Davis, what I think is interesting is that she's really interested in people's history, and actually, I, I think by her own criteria, she would eliminate herself from uh, being an elected official. Uh, Why is that? Well, I, I don't think that she's had a clear past or a stellar past. I mean, she's had some some problems, some issues. But um, I think it's interesting when she says that the public will know if somebody's had a shady background or there's something. I mean, the fact that Jesse Jr. was was reelected and Barack Obama was reelected, people are not paying attention to people's past or things that they've been involved in Actually, that haven't been up in that with. district. How about yeah. Gus? John- well, I don't know about Barack Obama, but Gus Savage. What did he do? He uh, allegedly had put his hands on a, a foreign service official in um, in uh, Africa. He was a man ahead of his time. Then John, and then what's his name? Mel Reynolds. We had right. uh, remember that he, he hit the lottery with the yeah. Catholic schoolgirl. That's a good campaign slogan there. And Derek Smith, and uh, I mean, you know, there's been history for a lot of elected officials, and it doesn't seem to have affected uh, the, the the vote they they get in. And it, it seems that people are voting for one or two things, and they're not really looking at all the issues. And that's the, that's the shame of it. And the very same people will complain about the regulations and, and the rules and, and the guidelines and, and what's going on, but yet they turn around and keep voting for the same people. Thanks, Maddie. Thank well, you. I just there's like, a depressing call. I like, thanks, Maddie. I love your call, Maddie. And, but what I think is uh, fascinating to me is Monique Davis you know, basically warning everybody she's going to drop the dime on people. And reporters live for this, okay? Let's be honest. We sit there, and all of a sudden, so you hear clicks of uh, high heels down the down the corridor, and then somebody <laughs> drops, the tra- drops the manila envelope through the transom, and you scream, sweetheart, get me rewrite, and you're on to a story. You know what? If she's going to drop a dime on somebody, I hope she's using a damn better phone than the one she had with us. That was bad. They're not going to have any idea. All the idea. good stuff. All the good stuff broke up. Maybe she should write a letter. Instead of dropping the dime, spend the money on the stamp and write a letter. Landline. Hey, you know what I like about uh, uh, technology? You know, the phone and, you know, and, and, and letters and emails and stuff. YouTube. The Rolling Stones had their 50th anniversary concert over the weekend. And the concert's already up on YouTube. 50 years. And you know what song they played? I Want to Be Your Man. That's a Beatles song. I Want to Be Your Man. They're 78 years old. Who are they going to be men with, for God's sake? Okay, they should be in a walker. If you're if you're a, a young woman out there over the age of sixty five, uh, is it going is it going to be Keith Richards, Mick Jagger, or or one of the others? What kind of? Oh, they looked old, and then wait, Keith, the only Keith thing Richards that was young? wearing the spandex. That is really they just look creepy. And but what's with does Mick Jagger still get? Does he get collagen shots in his lips? Why are his lips like? Still I, young looking, apparently. Well, my seats were, were were back a bit, so I didn't get oh, that close. That I didn't get back. I didn't get that close to his lips, but yeah, yeah I would stay but away I'm just from like, those too. They, they like got the, got to be in the seven, 50 years. They got to be in the mid seventies. Well, wow. when we were kids, they we'd watch uh, like our parents would say, "Oh, there's Guy Lombardo or something," and we'd say, "What what kind of old dude is that?" Right? You'd see that stuff on Saturday, on uh, New Year's Eve. Anyway, and these but, guys are old dudes now. Move on. But that's the Go. beauty of technology. You can watch their performance from London like almost immediately. <laughs> They're too old. 1044 it's back lost. after this. 
Wednesday morning on the Don and Roma Show on 89 WLS, a Powerball expert tells us how to win the lottery. And a different expert talks Chicago real estate prices. Wednesday morning on the Don and Roma Show on 89 WLS. 10.51, Jake Hartford, John Cass, 89 WLS, in for Bruce and Dan. Jeff in Geneva. Good morning, Jeff. Hi, guys. This is going to sound stupid that I know this. <laughs> nothing is stu- nothing is stupid on this show, Jeff. Remember right, that. I Want to Be Your Man was a big hit for the Stones in England. And it was written by John and Paul of the Beatles. The reason it was a big hit for the Stones was that when uh, Brian Epstein took over the Beatles, they were doing, uh, he wanted them to do, uh, oh, a little bit more middle-of-the-road rock sort of thing so they wouldn't offend anybody. And meanwhile, the Stones are doing Chuck Berry and Bo Diddley and uh, Muddy Waters and like that. So... John and Paul meet uh, Mick and Keith and say, look, we got a song that's uh, right for you, but it, it isn't going to work very well for us. So they recorded, uh, that is, the Stones recorded I Want to Be Your Man um, as their first big hit in, uh, in England. Meanwhile, the Beatles uh, got Ringo to sing it, if we can use that verb in, in that connection, on their first American album, uh, Meet the Beatles. So that's where, that's where this the whole thing comes from. So it, so it originally was the Stones? Uh, song uh, performed by and by them, but written by the Beatles. Written by the Beatles, yeah. Interesting. Yeah, I'm, you're caller of the show, Jeff. <laughs> you and you and the guy with the seats. Oh, thank you, guys. You're welcome. I appreciate it. You get nothing yeah. for it except our thanks <laughs> and our internal <laughs> gratitude. <laughs> thanks, guys. Thanks, See Jeff. So Bye-bye. that's Bye-bye. it, huh? Yeah. See, I always oh. thought it was just a Beatles song. I didn't realize it was a Stone song. Well, just the idea, though, of like rockers being 80 years old. Come on. End it. Go walk off into the sunset. You're 80 years old. Well, I mean, how can you... Imagine the groupies... Singing songs... Imagine that, the groupies they get. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, baby. <laughs> that is, you know, Grant, when, when, they, when the Stones... When your band is older than the Supreme Court... It's time to go back to the eight track. Well, when your group, you know? when your groupies could uh, clean their teeth and talk at the same time, you know you're old. Ten ten fifty four back after this. An ABC News update is just minutes away. Eighty nine WLS and online at wlsam.com. All right, is that Beatles or the Stones? It's not Crosby, Stills, Nash, and Young, I'll tell you that much. Wow. Okay. Mercy, whatever. Huh? It's old, okay? 19. Let's get some new music here. The Stones are toast. Come on. Hey, we're toast. We're done. We're out of here. Our two so hours we. is up. Uh, thank you, John. It was, it's been a pleasure today. It was just lovely. I've been excited all for two hours being here with you. Rush coming up in a couple minutes, and then it's Rowan Roper, your afternoon drive home from 2 until 6, right here on 89 WS. John and I will be back in 22. On the big 89! I'm just a slut. <laughs>